Hey guys, welcome back to Bear Mountain Builds. I'm Zach, and today we're gonna to be building a giant wall of French cleats. All right, we are out here in the new shop and we've got a big old blank wall up here that I wanna fill this entire thing with French cleats. And we're gonna start this off with stripping out our cleats from three quarter inch sanded plywood. I'm stripping down three three quarter inch sheets of sandy plywood starting off with cutting them in half to make it a bit easier to run through my table saw. From there, I stripped each piece down to multiple five inch sections. With those cut out, I'm setting my blade to 45 degrees and bisecting each of my strips into two cleats. The long side of each cleat measures at two and three quarters inches. With all the cleats stripped out, I gave them a quick sanding, then drilled pilot holes using a drill template to ensure I'll have consistent screw locations. Finally, I added a countersink to flush the screw face with the surface. All right, so we've got all of our French cleats cut out and ready to be put on our wall. My plan is to have my French cleat wall centered in between these two plugs, and it's gonna stretch out to 16 feet wide. However, I don't want to have a seam of my French cleats going right down the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an eight foot section all the way up right in the middle. And then we're going to cut the other ones in half and we'll do a four foot section over there and a four foot section over there. Now, when you're mounting French cleats to the wall, you want to work from the bottom up. That way you can use spacers from your previous cleat to measure out where your next cleat's going to go. That means you have to establish a baseline and here's how I'm going to establish mine. First off, I need to have a cleat that's going to be on center with my sockets here and then my cleats are gonna be spaced out six inches from each other. And then finally, my plan is to have my modular table pushed all the way up against my wall, which means I don't need to have any cleats below the top surface of my table. So how I'm gonna do this is I'll start right here, measure six inches down, and that's gonna be my first cleat. I cut out some spacers to sit on my tables and hold the first cleat in place. Additionally, I started the screws on each of my cleats to make the mounting process a bit faster and easier. I'm screwing into half inch OSB so I can put my screws anywhere, but if you're in a garage, you'll want to make sure that you're screwing it directly into studs or put up a sheet of plywood mounted directly into your studs as a backer board. I cut some more spacers that set the spacing between cleats at a consistent six inches from bottom edge to bottom edge. Honestly, these cleats go up really fast. Obviously, this French cleat wall is bigger than most people would ever build, but this design can be very easily scaled up to cover an entire wall or shrunk down to fit even in a closet. All right, we got our first section of French cleats on the wall, and as you can tell, it's big. Now, my original plan was I was gonna do another four foot section over there, another four foot section over there. But when I was cutting out all my French cleats, I just kind of went to town and cut up three full sheets of three quarter inch plywood, not really doing the math. And I ended up with way more than I really intended. So we got the French cleats, so we're gonna go big or go home. So we're gonna be doing a whole nother eight foot section over here and another eight foot section over here. But first, I just wanna ask you guys to please subscribe. It helps me out a ton, it's super free, and you'll be able to stay up to date on all my future projects. Now, let's put up more French cleats. I'm getting a little tired of dragging my driver up and down my ladder with one hand, so I thought I'd take advantage of this new French cleat wall I have, and I built a little simple platform, hangs on my wall, and I can put my driver on it. Super easy. I promise you this goes really fast. You can tell it goes from day to night through that window, but I have a day job and I can only work on this in the evenings. All 
All right, the great wall of French cleats is done and it is immense. And honestly, despite its size, it goes together super simple when you just pre-drill your holes and use some spacers. But now I have a huge wall of French cleats that is just begging for some tool storage. So let's keep going. All right, building French cleat platforms is pretty simple, but you do need to understand the basics. So here's a really quick physics lesson. This is a super simple French cleat platform. It's made up of three parts. Our French cleat with a 45 degree angle on it, our platform that's gonna hold our load, and then our supporting brace. How this works is it goes on the wall like that, and then we can put our driver on it and it holds it in place. How this works is that this driver has weight, which means it's applying load to our platform, which then transfers it into our French cleat, and then that transfers it into our wall. However, this driver is off the wall slightly, which means it's applying torque. So this whole platform wants to peel itself off the wall, but that's why we have our supporting brace right here and that resists our torque. If we increase our load more, we need to resist that torque further. So we can change our supporting brace to be longer like this. So when you put it on the wall, it braces itself up against our lower French cleat and we can resist even more torque. However, say we increase our load even further and one French cleat just isn't enough, we can do the same thing where we add a second French cleat on here and when it's on the wall like that, we now are transferring our load not to just one French cleat, but two, and you can even go more if it's even heavier, like three or four French cleats. Some people might be afraid of these coming off the wall, which overall, they're pretty much stuck on there, but you can lock them in place with just another piece of wood like this. It slides in right on top and it is rock solid, not coming off the wall. And then you can just pull it out, it pops right off. Now I will say that I built these to just show how French cleats work. I did not build these to brace that top platform, so it's really not supporting very well. So I would recommend that you add a gusset like this on there if you are gonna be loading up with more weight. Now you know how to build French cleats. For those of you that follow the channel, you'll know that I love clamps. So it's a great place for me to start. For these builds, I'm not gonna go too in depth on dimensions, but what I really wanna show you is some interesting design ideas and cool storage solutions. I'm putting all these holders together with glue and a brad nailer because it's really fast and simple, but if you don't have a brad nailer, you can just as easily use screws too. This router can get a little top heavy, so I routed out a groove for the base plate to fit into to make it a bit more secure. For all of these builds, I'm using 18 gauge, one inch and one and a quarter inch brad nails based on the thickness of the board. I live in the 21st century, which means you've gotta have a place to store your batteries and chargers. I found these great battery clips for DeWalt on Amazon, so if you want to check them out, I have them linked down below in the description, along with clips for all the other major brands.
Here's a little tip for mounting things with fixed screw slots. It's a lot easier to punch holes through paper than try and measure out the screw locations. You can pretty much make a platform to hold nearly every tool, but my corner clamps deserve better than that. I could have hung the blade on a peg, but magnets are cool. If you also think magnets are cool, I have a link for this down in the description. All right, so far we have built five very different tool holders, and with this you kind of understand how these all go together, but you can build ones that are more visually appealing versus some that are practical. And I've got a lot more designs coming, but this is a huge wall and I've got a ton of tools left. So we're gonna speed things up and we're gonna be focusing more on our finished product versus our building process. So let's fill up this wall.
All right, the great wall of French cleats is done. It looks amazing and I have a ton of tool holders up there and this will just continue to grow with me throughout the years as I put more tools on there. But what was really fun about this is I was able to really let my creative juices go and design everything. I did it all just on the fly. And the best part of it all is the only what I bought was for the French cleats themselves. Every single holder up there is made with scrap wood from previous projects. You might have noticed the giant American flag up there and that's because I am a red-blooded American. But I think one of the coolest parts about YouTube is I'm filming these videos and they're being seen around the world and I love all these guys that leave comments telling me where they're from and everything and I think it is so awesome that I'm reaching other points in the world. So because of that, I wanna honor you guys and I bought a bunch of these little flags from countries around the world. Now what I wanna do is I wanna surround my flag with your flag. So if you wanna get your flag up on the wall, just go down in the comments, let me know you're subscribed and where you're from and I'll get your flag added to the wall. I think it's a really cool way to kind of involve you guys in my videos and in my shop. As always, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my future videos. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please hit the like button, it helps me out a ton and I really do appreciate it. And leave a comment, let me know what you think of the build, also where you're from. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.